I suspect that there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamed of or can be dreamed of in any philosophy. The fact that we live at the bottom of a deep gravity well on the surface of a gas-covered planet going around a nuclear fireball 90 million miles away and think this to be normal is some indication of how skewed our perspective tends to be. That even Feynman himself was moved to remark, if you think you understand quantum theory, you don't understand quantum theory. And sometimes in their testing, the greatest scientists deploy a wildness of imagination, which, in the case of, a, of an Einstein or a Heisenberg, outclasses the best science fiction. I think reveling in the absurd is something that a great scientist probably does. This memory on the beach where the last people on earth wait in Australia to see what kind of death is going to be brought to them on the prevailing winds. But he could write about the, uh, the inevitable um, and in, about the, the possibility of extinction. In other words, that nature might not know we were here. Um, the great challenge to our self-esteem, to our solipsism, that there could be a point in evolution where evolution that hadn't noticed we'd arrived wouldn't even notice that we'd gone either. Howling wilderness, but the banner, there is still time, brother, is still flapping in the, in the wind to mock all our illusions. And it's the attempt to live without illusions that I believe is the most dangerous, but the most worthwhile, and in some ways the most enjoyable undertaking, despite its risks, of all. Cosmology is a real bastard in a lot of ways. It's made it ever harder, has been making it ever harder for us to think too highly of ourselves. Ever since Galileo deposed us from our very conceited position, the one we'd chosen for ourselves, of course, um, and had pointed out to us by the comforting church at the center of uh, what was thought of as creation. Uh, now it's almost a commonplace because of the, the knife edge of climatology on which we understand ourselves to live and when we see the rest of our, just our tiny little suburb of a solar system, an unimportant speck in an unimportant suburb of a, of a little known galaxy, just in our neighborhood, every other planet is either too hot to live in or too cold, and lots of our planet is one of those or the other, and the rest is on a knife edge as we've increasingly come to understand. And so the probability of our being here forever is nil, and the possibility that we'll last as long as our planet isn't that great, but suppose we do. Here's something to cheer you up. Most educated people, said Sir Martin, are aware that we are the outcome of nearly four billion years of Darwinian selection. But many tend to think that humans are still somehow the culmination of that. Our sun, however, is less than halfway through its lifespan. It will not be humans who watch that sun's demise six billion years from now. Any creatures that then do exist will be as different from us as we are from bacteria or amoeba.